The Road to Belleville is about a road trip that starts at my home in East Highland, California and travels northeast into the heart of the San Bernardino Mountains. The route is almost entirely on California Highway 38. The journey ends in the Holcomb Valley, which is north and above Big Bear Lake. This is where the gold rush town of Belleville thrived in the early 1860s after Bill Holcomb discovered gold there. The trip is 60 miles long and the history along the way travels back in time, more than 200 years. There are 13 historical stops on the road to Belleville and they are marked out on this map. I'll make a short video for each stop to showcase the people and places that pioneered the rich history of the San Bernardino Mountains and foothills. Stop 12 on the road to Belleville is about Lucky Baldwin and the Baldwin Mine. Leaving Stop 11, the story of Benjamin Davis Wilson in Bear Lake, who traveled about two miles to Stop 12, the story of Lucky Baldwin's gold mine. Stop 12 is about mines, hotels, lakes, horse racing, and scandals. This is a photo of Baldwin Lake. Originally, it was named Bear Valley Lake by Benjamin Wilson. When they dammed the valley west of here and formed a new lake, it was named Big Bear Valley Lake. And this lake was renamed Baldwin Lake after Lucky Baldwin. The Ultimate Businessman. Here's a younger, middle-aged and older photo of Lucky Baldwin. The last Baldwin did not like his nickname, Lucky. He felt he worked very hard to make his fortune. Elias Jackson Baldwin was born in Hamilton County, Ohio on April 3rd, 1828. At an early age, his family moved to Indiana. At the age of 18, Elias eloped with Sarah Ann Unruh. When they returned home, they started farming and training horses. Horses would be a big part of Elias's life until his death. At the early age of 22, Elias was a merchant in Valparaiso, Indiana. He built three canal boats that were the first to travel between Chicago and St. Louis. This is a photo of Elias Baldwin's first wife, Sarah. The Baldwins left Indiana and moved to Racine, Wisconsin. While there, they kept a store and purchased a hotel. Elias heard about the gold country of California from travelers who stayed at his hotel. Elias actually built four wagons that his family traveled west of California in. They left for California on February 5th, 1853. Elias used some of his wagons to haul tobacco, brandy, and tea to sell. The Baldwins joined a wagon train that traveled the California Trail. Elias would often ride ahead of the wagons and scout. Once he got lost, only to be helped back to his party by a helpful Native American. Nearing Salt Lake City, the wagon train was attacked by unfriendly Indians, and much of the wagon train was lost. This painting is from C.B. Glasscock's biography of Baldwin, and the painting was made from Elias's description of the attack. The Baldwins made it to Salt Lake City, where Elias sold his supplies. Legend has it, his brandy was sold to Mormon leader Brigham Young's brother for $16 a gallon. With the money Elias made in Salt Lake City, he bought horses to drive west into California. On August 10, 1853, the Baldwins made it to Hangtown, California, now known as Placerville. Elias's shoes were worn out and he limped into Hangtown shoeless. That would be the last time in his life that he would be in such a state. Elias sold all the horses for a 400% profit and the ever-present businessman was on his way in California. Elias took the profit he had made traveling west and bought the Temperance Hotel in Old San Francisco. I can't imagine that too many settlers actually made money moving out west. Elias did and his legend is forming. Elias invested in manufacturing bricks for a booming San Francisco city with a great demand for them. 
As Elias made more money in his business, he started investing in mines and became a major player in the San Francisco Stock Exchange. Elias made a fortune in the Comstock load, and it's estimated that he pulled $9 million out of the Ophir mine, pictured here. So how did Elias Jackson Baldwin turn into Lucky Baldwin? Some rich Englishmen invited Elias to go to India on safari. When leaving, he instructed his business manager to sell some mine stocks he had if they fell below $800 a share. The stocks did fall below $800, but Elias forgot to leave the key to the safe that contained the stocks. Unfortunately, the stocks rebounded and rose up to $12,000 a share. And upon Elias's return, he found that he had made millions of dollars on them, and the legend of Lucky Baldwin was born. With the profits from his mining ventures, Elias built the Baldwin Hotel. Here are two photos of the hotel during construction. This is a wood engraving of the Baldwin Hotel. It was completed in 1876 as the most luxurious hotel in the city. The beautiful hotel was located at the corner of Powell and Market Streets near Union Square. In 1875, Lucky Baldwin journeyed to Southern California, where he liked the land that he saw in the San Gabriel Valley. Lucky purchased 8,000 acres of the Santa Anita Rancho. This is a great old photo of life on the Santa Anita Rancho from the 1890s. The size of the rancho's operations was immense. It included 100 miles of water mains from 14 artesian wells, 700 acres of orange trees, 100 acres of lemons, 100 acres of fruit trees, including almonds and English walnuts, 2,000 acres of vegetables, 25,000 acres of corn, hay, and grains, 20,000 sheep, 3,000 cattle, 500 working mules, 500 draft and carriage horses, and his favorite, thoroughbreds, 250 of them. He kept buying land around him until he was farming and ranching over 46,000 acres. In 1874, Lucky instructed his manager to buy some gold claims in the San Bernardino Mountains above Bear Valley Lake for $30,000. By March of 1875, they started up the only 40 stamp mill in the area and started crushing ore. Lucky closed the mine down after seven months of operation. They weren't finding enough gold to pay to keep the mine open. This is a photo of the mining town of Doble. The site was originally known as Bairdstown and it died off only to come back as Doble when the Baldwin mine opened up again years later. In 1899, Baldwin put money back into the mine, something he said he would never do, with a man named J.R. Delamar. They built another 40 stamp mill further up the mountain. Delamar wanted to try a new cyanide method of extracting gold from the ore, and it turned out to produce about $4,000 a week of precious metal. This is a photo of the local brothel in Doble. No respecting mining town in the 1800s would be without one. Ladies offering their services in trade for the miners' pay or gold. Gold mining went on for a few years after Lucky's death, but eventually everything closed up and Doble was abandoned. In 1904, Lucky built a world-class horse racing park at his Santa Anita ranch. Lucky was passionate about his thoroughbreds and raised four winners of the famous American Derby run each year in Chicago, Illinois. This is one of the American Derby winners named Volante. Here's where Lucky laid to rest his four American Derby winners, Volante, Silver Cloud, Emperor of Norfolk, and Ray L. Santa Anita. The stable's emblem of a Maltese cross is placed over his beloved horses. The Guild Museum in Arcadia has this jockey's attire of the Baldwin Stables with a Maltese cross in red. In February of 1909, the state of California outlawed horse racing, just a month before Lucky died. 
1912, his racetrack burnt down and was rebuilt again in 1934 after racing was legal again. The new track is not on the same spot as Lucky's, but it's close. Lucky was no stranger to scandals. He was married four times and had countless lovers. He was a well-known womanizer and had four breach of promise to marry cases against him. One writer at the time wrote that Lucky didn't even have to chase women. They chased him and his money. His third wife was younger than his daughter and his fourth wife was younger than his granddaughter. He was shot at point blank range by one spurned lover and another one's sister shot him in a courtroom where he's being sued by a young lover. He survived both attacks, enriching his nickname. Lucky built a beautiful home known as the Queen Anne Cottage on his ranch for his third wife, Lily Bennett. It was designed by her father, A.A. Bennett. Today, it's on the grounds of the Los Angeles Arboretum. Here are a few photos I took of the Victorian cottage. If the Queen Anne Cottage looks familiar, there's a good reason. Ever heard of the TV show Fantasy Island? A lot of the show was filmed at the cottage. Here is the plane, the plane, on the lake in front of the Queen Anne Cottage. Lucky developed the city of Arcadia, and his daughter Anita, who was named after the rancho, carried on after her father's death. Places named after our California pioneer include Baldwin Park, Baldwin Hills, Baldwin Village, Baldwin Avenue, the Baldwin Stakes, and of course, the road to Belleville connection of the Baldwin Mine and Baldwin Lake. Elias Jackson, lucky, Baldwin, died on March 1st, 1909, and chose to be buried in the Bay Area at the Cypress Law Memorial Park in Colma, California. One of California's biggest pioneers, he achieved much in his lifetime and left a huge legacy all over California. The abandoned Baldwin Mine and the man named Lucky are being remembered on The Road to Belleville.